What's up, everybody? This is Donnie, a.k.a. Elevated, and not Jenkins from Dota Alchemy. We're actually replacing Jenkins with his twin brother, Yankins. He's, like, Scandinavian, um, and that they generally say J's is wise there. So, you know, anyway. How are you doing, Yankins? Thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, I enjoy your bit, Donnie, but I'm not doing an accent for this entire video, and you can go frig yourself, because I don't want to get demonetized in the first 30 seconds. <sighs> man all right Shove it. well there goes that ploy but anyway i'm, I'm actually joined by jenkins it, it was just a joke and we're just going to go ahead and talk about these patch notes because hey another patch before ti and ti is like 18 days away less than that it's like two weeks basically so yeah, yeah. this this will be the final patch before ti you have to think right i think so i, I don't think there's any other tournament between then and now so so let's go ahead and get into it. And the very first change is to items. The consuming recipe cost of Aghanims has been reduced by 200 gold. So a little bit easier to get that synth where you don't have to take up an item slot. Um, People weren't really buying that yeah. at all. Other than, you know, super late into the game when you just get 2,000 gold for killing a single creep wave. So relatively minor change. I don't think people are going to get it early anyway with this change. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a very, very minimal slight buff to Alchemist, I suppose, because he just gets them a little bit earlier. That's true. Alk is already pretty good. Uh, so hero changes, we have Abaddon, or Abaddon, actually, as he pronounces it. Uh, base attack speed increased from 115 to 120. Base armor increased by one. I see a few people trying this on offline. It seems awful, but people are doing it. So maybe this is going to help those people uh, not lose as many pubs. Yeah, I was just thinking that this sort of seems to be the direction that is being pushed for Abaddon at this point, because they nerfed the Mist Coil, and they've buffed his uh, passive like five times or something like that, and now they're giving him the ability to trade a little bit better. So it, it doesn't it, seem great, but it seems like that's what they're trying to do with this hero. And it makes sense. It's the new spell. You don't want people just not leveling up the new spell and playing right. the hero. That's kind of not great feeling if you're a game designer. It's like people aren't using your thing. <laughs> Ancient Apparition, Cold Feet, Travel Distance reduced to 715. So uh, unless I'm reading that incorrectly, that's a nerf. Yeah, it's uh, just a little bit you... easier to get out of the distance that you have to go yeah. to not get frozen. And then Ice Blast, Mana Cost increased, and that, the Health Regen reduced a little bit. I think the Cold Feet really is the only thing that would be that would be a, a nerf. These other things seem kind of irrelevant to what the hero does. Yeah. You don't really have mana issues. The Health Regen was kind of cool. Yeah, but it was pretty irrelevant as well. Just cause, like, Those talents aren't very good, to be yeah. honest. They're pretty mediocre talents. Yeah, I definitely think the Cold Feet is a bit of an issue because it already felt like you were barely proccing it, and so now those times where you would barely proc it, you, you basically have to have a setup stun for this to go off now, it feels like. Yeah. Speaking of setup stuns, Beastmaster, Primal Roar, Knockback, now destroys any trees the unit comes into contact with. All right, cool. That's so Monkey anime. King nerf. Great. It's a very <laughs> anime true. change. They're like true, true. people blowing this stuff be up. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bloodseeker base movement speed increased by five. That's pretty good because he's he gets percentage based off of his thirst, right? So yeah, and he also just wants to be able to hit people initially to trade. So definitely a good true. buff to the hero, but he's still not really being picked very much. I saw Zai running him a couple times, but losing with it. So yeah, Zai does that a lot with a yeah. lot of heroes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bounty bus! Another nice, sure boss. Mana cost reduced. This is great because honestly, this ability is pretty good. But a lot of people don't level it up because you just want to have the mana for using the invis. Yeah, uh, people will level the invis, like max the invis, or at least get a couple of points in it because sure toss just costs so much mana. You're not going to be able to sustain it at the early points in the game. So this is nice for him. Yeah, he's kind of like a venge in that way, where it's like you get like two sure tosses and then you're just completely oom for the rest of the laning stage, which is not very fun. Yeah, yeah. Brewmaster, base intelligence, speaking of mana, uh, he's got a little bit more, which is nice. He's one of those heroes where he's got this, like, mana-intensive spell, relatively mana-intensive, and he just can't use it twice at right. level one. It really sucks. So a little bit of int on heroes like Pudge and Brewmaster goes a long way. Yeah, absolutely. Centaur, retaliate damage reduced to 12% at the, at the big boy levels. 
honestly, this shit giving him rapier damage is a little absurd. Yes. So agreed. Definitely much needed. He's still one of the best offlaners right now. So I imagine that I imagine that since creep cutting has gotten nerfed and his ability to play the lane with this has gotten nerfed a little bit, he's gonna fall off in favor of these new offlaners such as, you know, Enchantress and the uh potential offlane Skyrass and things like that. I've seen I've seen some offlaners running some crazy stuff trying to figure out the new offlaners right now. Yep. Chaos Knight, another buff to Reality Rift. This skill is actually pretty insane. It provides a very strong slow with even just like two points. 20% is, is a great slow. It also brings people closer and now you're getting more uses of it before you max it out. Um, I mean, I won't lie. I've been running this as a position five occasionally and it works pretty Jesus. well. And uh, I- Bad I, influence, Donnie. I, I, I honestly guy. think that, that, that a four Chaos Knight is pretty relevant, especially with this. Sure, yeah. Offlane two, mm -hmm. possibly. Definitely. Uh, Chen base movement speed reduced by five. I don't really see Chen as a hero that needs to move all too much. Uh, Divine favor cooldown increased in the early levels. So I don't the, think that's a big teleport, deal. Teleport, right? Yeah, I don't think yeah. that's a big deal either because really you use it once to try to get your lanes correct, and then after that it's it's more of a, a late game ability. And then of course you level it for the. The yeah. passive as well so it scales back to where it was anyway so it's basically like i guess slightly less broken as far as lane swapping in the early game but it doesn't really change much definitely still broken definitely still yeah. broken clockwork hookshot stun duration increased finally finally man the early levels in this stun it's not enough to cog nog back people it's really miserable like you can't chain stun people with clockwork or you couldn't i should say so this is a much needed buff to clockwork he's needed this for years for years even when he was good it's annoying it's like oh you need tranquil boots to cog knock back people because then you have the <laughs> movement speed right and that's such a silly ridiculous requirement I, I feel like being able to chain stun somebody with a, a skill shot like hook shot kind of makes sense if you're doing something cool like cog knock backing people it feels bad to just have queen of pains and shit blink away because you just have a one second pathetic stun duration at level one so that's nice yeah, I mean, I feel like the hero is still kind of in that spot where he is good on paper, but it just seems like he doesn't do enough from the four slot to, like, really be a top-tier pick. I think he's good. I think he's underrated, but there's certain heroes that don't care at all about a clockwork that you can right. pick to completely stop his roaming, like Broodmother, like uh, Puck, uh, Batrider. Like, these heroes, you just pick them in your, in your lanes, and clock has no game, and roamers have to... Like, Clock has to kill people to have a game is the thing. Yeah, exactly. And if you can't kill people, it's, it's really rough. He is very good against, like, Spirit Breaker and Earthshaker and Romeo on heroes like Shadow Fiend and stuff like that. But the mids these days feel like they're pretty elusive. They're, they basically don't even lane, so it's, like, hard to roam on them as Clock these days. Yeah. Mid roaming has been hard for a while now. Uh, yep. Crystal Maiden, base armor reduced by one. This hero is getting picked up a bit as a four, but uh, I found it quite underwhelming my pubs that people play it. They just are out of mana the entire laning phase. Maybe that, I mean, that obviously that's personal bias from shitty Crystal Maiden players, but uh, I think this hero's base armor reduced by one. It's not that big of a deal. It's about the same. I mean, she's so slow. It's like you get on top of her, she's dead anyway. So yeah, <laughs> whether she has one yeah. more armor or not. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Darkseer buffs. A buff. Unbelievable. Holy shit. That's crazy. Vacuum damage increased a little bit. I mean, it's such a small buff. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's literally just like throwing some scraps yeah, to like a starving dog, damage. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like going to McDonald's to buy yourself food and then you give the homeless person outside the McDonald's like the McFish fillet. Right. The homeless person's just like, I don't want the fish fillet. I'd yeah. rather starve. That's what this is. Exactly. This is yeah, they buffed vacuum damage, which is like, okay, <laughs> cool. It's not like nice. you use this for damage anyway. Dude, that's epic DPS coming from Darks here. Yep. Okay, Dark Willow, Terrorize, Duration reduced, so it now scales from 3.5 to 4, and uh, the cooldown has been increased. This hero's being picked up as a 5 roll a hmm. lot, at least in NA pubs, and of course as a 4 it's been utilized quite a bit, so it does, it make does a lot not of surprise sense. me. She's got very like good attack for harassing in lane, she's like really good at poking, and then she has like 3 stuns basically, the which Q is pretty nuts. The Q has like a five second downtime at level one too. It's it's actually ridiculous. Uh, okay, Dragonite, Elder Dragon form, Scepter Magic Resistance increased to forty percent. So this guy wow. is 
pretty tanky. And then 210 GPM at level 20. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of people won for that talent. And it was like 50-50. People are very uh, extreme on both ends for like, you should always go for this on DK. You should always go for the, uh, the strength. So this will turn the tides on that a little bit. Yeah, I know that yeah. CCNC has been playing this hero and dumping on people with it in the few There's quite a few played. mids, yeah. yeah. There's people that are like so insistent that DK is broken with the ags. Mm -hmm. People think the Black Dragon is, is really good. So I, I think, yeah, this, this buff could possibly push DK into relevance, which will make it clear that DK was probably already broken with this build. Yep. Uh, okay, Draw Ranger. Base strength increased by one. Base agility increased by one. She's always been a hero that has uh, trouble with just stats in the early game, so anything that makes her a little bit tankier, a little bit more um, able to do damage is, is going to be good for her. Her early game has sucked for a long time. And then Gus Blind is 40% now because nobody's... Dude, I mean, what's the duration on Gus? It's pretty high, if I remember correctly. The uptime? Wow. Eight, eight seconds or something. Six, six second duration, 13 second cooldown, so you can keep people blinded for like half the time yeah. pretty and much. The, and then you get the you get the three second Gus Silence duration. Mm -hmm. I assume the silence would course be probably I, I perpetuate the blind also i would imagine yeah i think so i would imagine so elder titan echo stomp mana cost reduced cool i mean he's got two spells and kind of sucks to build a soul ring so reducing his mana costs pretty nice i don't think there's enough to push him into relevance uh, i don't think that his spells like do enough damage to justify you're not going to spam out stomps in the laning phase i guess my problem with him is laning your laning feels really rough unless you're specifically picking him to like beat one specific hero up that you know he can trade with. Mm. And then countering like a late game morphling or terrorblade is, sure, is sure. where he's always kind of been. Like that's the reason you really pick him. For... Right. I think he still stays as like a niche pick. Right. Ember base armor reduced by one. All right, that's good. He's still really strong. I'm glad to see any Ember Spirit nurse. <laughs> he's definitely going to get punished a lot more in lane. Like, he's already being punished by certain heroes in lane. And uh, more base armor reduction means it's like, you know, the Dazzles, the... Even Monkey like Kings. even like DK, I feel like, is a pretty good counter to him in lane. Just because you can't be harassed out and you can trade even better. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Enigma, base intelligence reduced by two. This hero has been getting picked for so long now, ever since the... Uh, sharing regen bullshit yeah. that was occurring. Uh, he fell off a bit, and then people realized that it's still really good just based on the fact that if there's no black hole counter, you just win late game with Enigma. He's he's your one position. And uh, that still remains true, even with this base intelligence nerf. I still think Enigma's in a really good spot ever since they changed his black hole to be pure damage and the, sure. the midnight pulse to be to do more damage. This hero's really good. Holy shit, Grimstroke. Dude, what, oh. what are they doing to my boy, man? This Another oh, base damage nerf. Yeah, this guy sucks at trading in lane, man. Terrible. Oh, oh no, not Invoker Bus. No, that we just got the kid Invoker. Are you kidding? Come I mean, on, let's, motherfucker. Let's be honest. Exhort Invoker is not very good. But the Cold Snap, like with the Cold Snap talents, I've seen some people like destroying with like the, the Quas Wax roaming Invoker with Cold Snap. Uh, spirit vessel and this is just like more towards that you get the ghost walk cooldown reduction you get the cold snap uh is it cooldown reduction i believe as well yeah and now you have extra damage like i feel like that's that's how you play this hero right now can we talk about how shitty this icon is for cold snap this yeah. looks like somebody what is who that? just learned how to use photoshop drew it as their first attempt they're like oh this kind of what? looks like ice what is <laughs> like that? Like Dude, it's ice. It's like an it's like an ice ball or a snowball or something. Well, how's it? What? That's, anyway, it's dumb. Yeah. I've also seen people running. Yapsor in particular has been running a lot of four invoker, and this, uh, you know, makes four invoker sound pretty good. Sure, sure. You'd want to go Quaswax for that. Yep. All right. Juggernaut base agility reduced, base strength reduced. Is this hero uh, just terrible? His... Like <laughs> Jug? No, 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 no. God no. I no, mean. He's good. He's still good. He's still good, but it's like you have to have a Quelling Blade to last hit in lane at this point because his base damage is ass. It's always yeah, been gets terrible. A, everybody gets a Quelling Blade. Like well, it's his BAT that makes him good at last hitting in lane. True, but I'm just saying, like, I feel like this is another round of nerfs for a hero that people are still picking because it's just a very stable hero, but it's like the stability of this hero is just getting worse and worse. 
Good. Ever, ever since the Omni change, he's been like above, like well above stable. And the problem is like Jug is supposed to be a stable hero. Yeah. So it's dumb when he's OP. So I agree with these nerfs. Keep of the light. Will of Wisp radius increased. Oh, that's cool. Again. That is really cool. Yeah, that's awesome because I mean that thing pull that thing pulls you in, man. Like having that be bigger. If you're caught in the middle, you're you're stuck. You're screwed. You know this this ability is good. This ability is really underrated. It's been getting buffed for three patches in a row. Yep. Ever since they took the refresher away, they've had to make the the actual ability a lot better. Yeah. Love this. Love this ability. Yeah, that hero's good. Luna base damage. All right, magic damage. Luna coming in hot. I mean, this hero is. I I think this hero is legitimately good, and it, like more buffs to a hero that's legitimately good. It's uh, it's gonna get picked. It's gonna get picked at TI. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. She's gonna be the uh, not so subtle stealth pick. Uh, Lycan, Feral Impulse damage increased to 2% higher. <laughs> cool. A little more damage. Howl. Howl bonus regen also increased by 2. This hero is uh, still super high win rate. And one person in particular, I've been I've been looking at a lot of like uh, Dota 2 Pro Tracker stuff. I think this hero has been picked like 150 times in the last week. And like 50 of them are Eternal Envy. He's literally just been playing this hero every single game. He's a big Lycan player. Yeah. yeah, he's very good at Lycan. I think Lycan's good. Mars, base damage reduced by two. This is definitely necessary. His laning is a little bit too strong. And then God's Rebuke with the Aghanim Scepter in the late game is crazy good. So a little bit of nerfs to him. I, I still think he's in relatively the same place where there are certain games where he's just really good in the game. But uh, he's super hard counterable. He picked like a bat support. He has no game. Mm hmm He's definitely not the hero that he was when he first came out, where it was like, oh, no. you pick Mars, you win. It's like, he feels like he's, if you pick him first phase, you're probably not going to have a very good game on Mars. Yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely balanced. Morphling, waveform cast range reduced by 300 at level 1, and then morph cast range reduced at level 1. Uh, this is great, because it feels like you just need to have waveform at level 1, and it's almost equivalent to waveform at level 4. And the same goes for Morph. He just uses Morph in a team fight, uses Waveform in a team fight, does the exact same thing you want as a Morphling at any level. So making them making these worse at level one is, is necessary. This hero's been good he's ever so, since the change to Morph. He's so good. He's, yeah. he's still just the crazy hero. I do like that you have to put yourself in more danger to get the ability that you want now with the Morph cast range change. And then, uh, like you said, people were just keeping... Uh, waveform at level one as an escape and then just maxing out adapt uh, adaptive strike and the ability shift so now yep. you have to actually think about that uh nature's profit yes all right in your, game your and boy. that's that's damage. great because it's that's damage for core natures love it absolutely love it the mana doesn't really matter at all because you're nature's profit but yeah that's great for for core the hero has had pretty good right click damage Ever since they changed his agi scaling, like he's a legit carry. So I I, I, I love that he, this hero is becoming more core because that's what I play. So, uh, <laughs> Bulldog is coming back. As, he could qualify, man. He said it. Uh, Necrophos base intelligence increased by one. That's great because he gets regen based off of last hits. So a little bit more last hit power. This guy's base damage sucks. Uh, and the death pulse radius. Wow, I, I never thought that they would touch death pulse radius. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, just further reaching That's nuke. That's really good. That's extremely good for the laning phase. Are you kidding me? Like, you can hit people yep. a, so much easier now. That is crazy. I figure they would almost never touch that. Because you walk up and you hit the range creep, and you like the whole point of laning with this hero is you try to hit people and get last hits with the death pulse at the same time. Yep, and this just makes it easier by a pretty yeah. significant amount since it is the radius that's increased, so... I think this hero legit might be good at actually seeing these changes. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, Night Stalker base movement speed increased by five. This is great for him because he gets percentage base movement speed. It's also we all know what slightly less of a creep. He's still still a big old creep in the first five minutes, but he yeah, he's a pretty pretty big creep. But he might not die quite as much because he is a little bit harder to chase down now, I suppose. Yeah. Omni Knight purification cooldown increased in the early levels. It's not a big deal because you max this anyway for laning. And the level 20 talent, people weren't going for it. Uh, that's weird to nerf, see that one get nerfed because you would just go the degen aura because you would have items like Solar Crest 
and uh, drums and, and possibly even a soul ring at this point. You don't have mana issues. You don't, you don't need four mana reach out on Omni. Are you kidding me? Uh, nerfing like level 20 talents is also pretty weird because it feels like at once you get to like level 20, 25, it's like it doesn't really matter what the numbers are unless it's something absurd like Drow's cooldown reduction talent yeah, yeah. or something. Ooh, I see a punch change. I'm excited for this. All right. Uh, Outworld Devour, Astral Imprisonment, cooldown increased. Uh, you max this anyway for laning, so this is fine. Uh, Sanity's Eclipse, mana cost increased. That, that's not a big deal either because he has infinite mana. It's a lot of mana though at the very end. Like, sure, sure. You know, 450 is a pretty big deal. It's 125 additional mana yeah, but, cost. But... but at this point in the game, you can True. you can you can spam your you should be for uh, right. Q without even using the talent or sorry without even using the spell. So. Okay, Phantom Assassin, base damage increased by one. This is good because they just buffed her dagger, or rather they fixed the dagger, so the slow is better. So Right. This makes her a lot stronger at laning, and then she gets uh, 225 you, health. Yeah, you definitely go this talent. 15 damage versus 225 health. I think you go for the health talent every single time. Like, it yeah, allows it allows you to actually be able to fight. People are doing this on Void. They take, like, the strength talent. Weaver, they take the strength talent a lot of the time. Slark, you take the strength talent. Um, because you want to be able to contribute before you have like a BKB, and this allows you to be able to do that. I mean, you can just. There's a lot of items to give you 15 damage. That's not that's yeah. not that much. Uh, Pudge, Meat Hook, Mana Cost Reduced. Oh boy. All right. This is great because this is what you max last. So 125 mana? Fuck yeah, man. That makes four Pudge possibly legit. 125 mana for 150 pure damage? What? Like. <laughs> Think about the math on that, dude. The only problem is the cooldown is so long. Yeah. But yeah, that's nice. That's beautiful. Does this I give you like that. one full extra hook that you wouldn't have otherwise? Probably. I mean, they just gave him an in buff too. Mm. I love it. All right. I'm playing Pudge after this, dude. <laughs> of course you are. Ricky, blink strike, cast range, increase. This guy needs huge buffs or he's awful. Yeah. Uh, and then, okay, so they took it from the talent and they added it to the blink strike cast range. That's oh, pretty cool. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I don't it know. Feels pretty short. This this hero still feels pretty lackluster. Almost always yeah. rather pick anything else other than this hero if you want to win the game. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, sky rep buffs. More mystic flare damage. That's good. Fifty really more are. damage. Sure. Cool. I'll take it. Slark base damage reduced by one. Good riddance. Uh, pounce leash. They've really reduced the pounce leash talents they've reduced this talent multiple times mm. I mean, was it three seconds to start i think so like that. it and was they... pretty absurd because roots have just been buffed so much over the last yeah. like two years yeah and then they've reduced they also reduced this spell so slark's pretty good right now though just innately the fact the yeah. fact that he I, I think the most broken thing about him is the fact that he's so good at dewarding and sentries are limited yeah and that... wards give you so much gold so and there's just, also just a lot of really tanky heroes that are being picked right now that are like long, drawn true. out far fights where they're just like beefing Slark up for the entire fight and then he just carries Yeah, he's, he's like decent in the game, like in, mo in most games, at least decent. Yep. Uh, Spirit Breaker, Bulldoze mana cost increased by a little bit. Uh, the hero doesn't build that many mana items, so this definitely could possibly hurt him a little bit, but honestly not that much. Nether Strike damage reduced a little bit. And it scales to be the same. So this is these are pretty insignificant in my opinion for Spirit Breaker. I mean, you do max bulldoze first right now, so maybe that hurts them a little, but not that much. I, I imagine like one or two bracers. You're not gonna have any mana issues at all. Yeah, I mean, you usually go for like an urn medallion anyway, so you have two mana items pretty early on. Yeah. Damn, dude, Sven nerfs again on the Stormhammer. You're like, stop picking this one, hero. <laughs> 1.25 seconds. At least it still scales to be the same thing. It's right. still a beast. I like when they change, because this is this is so like integral to the hero yeah. and, and how you play it in the game and what makes it fun. It's just like Stormhammering a bunch of people and blowing up everybody with the cleave. So I like that it's two seconds at max level. Yeah, it, it has to be. Suck at level one. You need to be able to hit people like two or three times while they're stunned. And if it was, if they did, gave him like the Slardar treatment where it's just one at all levels, you'd be like, all right, this hero's unplayable. Yeah. Jesus, man, these terribly changes are pretty irrelevant. I mean, yay, fear duration. Okay, that 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 is like equivalent to changing nothing. I don't know. I feel like nobody. <laughs> You have to change this to like 10 seconds and somebody it, will start picking up the eggs. It's like gotta NPS be the support. worst eggs 
in the entire yeah, game. It's definitely awful. And uh, evasion, yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's getting to a point where it's some serious evasion. 10% feels kind of low. 15% still feels kind of low, but something. Knows, maybe. Whoa, holy shit. Am I reading this correctly? More tinker buffs? Is this real? Is this actually real? A mana cost reduction in fucking talents on Tinker? That is broken. That's crazy. In 125 cast range? Dude, this hero's crazy good. Yeah, he has to be, right? I mean, you have to choose between the cast range and the spell amp, but I, I assume you're just always going cast range, even Dog. though the spell amp is super good. And then you get, like, you put a Kaya on this, and then you also get Monocost, Monolos Reduction Man. in addition to that? I, I, I legit thought that the 150 gold per minute add to, like, everybody was freaking oh, out about that. You have, to, you have to pick between that and the Monolos. I don't but, think it's that good. But you farm so quickly anyway, true. and you buy all these small items. You have Ether Lens, you have Blink Dagger, you have Soul Ring, you have Travels, you have uh, Bottle. So, like, that's almost your entire inventory. Then you have one item after that, and then you start swapping in and out items, right? So, true. at the point that you get the 150 gold per minute, it's good for, like, Dagons and Sheep Sticks and stuff like that. But Tinker, you need these small items and then one really big item, and then you're just a beast. So... I, I love this. I love. I mean, mana, mana cost, mana loss reduction lets you farm more. Like that's gold per minute right there. Yeah, I mean, the, the really scary oh, thing. Cast range because you yeah. can farm more camps safer. You can jump into into places where you can farm camps when the map is unsafe. This hero's good, man. This hero's cast really range good. plus aether lens plus a hex is just like it's just silly. I'm spamming that hero, man. This is my hero. All right, tusk base armor increased by one. This hero's. Uh, getting picked up a decent amount. It's good in combos, so yeah, this is this is pretty good for him because he's a trader in the laning phase. So makes a lot of sense, that, right? Well, no, it doesn't make a lot of sense, I should say. It just it's good for any Tusk players out there. More buffs to Underlord. Yep, probably so still is... not enough cool to make reduced. him good. Yeah, probably not. Dark Rift cooldown reduced. At the later levels, the cooldown doesn't matter too much because you're not going to spend that like split pushing on your own. You play with your team. And as a team fight ability, you don't really need to use it more than every 100 seconds. That's the thing. Like, the, the use of that ability shifts as the game progresses. And uh, Pit of Malice cooldown reduced so so minimally. Although, the, the having it two seconds less at level 4, that's definitely, like, the biggest change there. Mm -hmm. that, it, that you have more uptime on it. Let me see. What's the uptime? Okay, so Pit Blast for 12 seconds. It's got 16 seconds cooldown. If they made that 12, this would be <laughs> crazy. Insane, yeah. yeah. Obviously, obviously. Uh, okay, Vengeful Spirit. Magic Missile. Mana cost reduced. Again. Again. <laughs> Finally, they reduce it at the max level. So at the max level, it's 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 lower. So this hero is like strictly better yep. once she's maxed out. So this is great for her. It's not just a scaling thing. Uh, Viper, 160 damage at level 25. Everybody uh, goes for the Nether Toxin talent. It's, it's too good. It's too good. It <laughs> yeah. still is. Yeah. Hmm, Weaver buffs. Weaver's always struggled with his base stats. Yeah. So any base stat changes to Weaver, I'm a fan of. I love this. This is good. This hero is underrated. Yeah. Wraith King. Mortal Strike mana cost increase to spawn the little Skelly Bros. Yep. You don't really use it at level 1 anyway, so yeah. it's just relatively insignificant. And then the base damage on Wraith Fire Blast. Okay, that's a big change. Because honestly, when they changed... When they changed it so that the stun duration scaled and that the damage was 100 at level 1, I thought that that was arguably better depending on the lane because you just get so much damage for so little mana. Like It right. made it such a spell to trade with. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still, like, I wouldn't say this makes the hero irrelevant. He's still pretty pretty good for what he does. It's like, these, these damage I'm numbers sorry. are not that big of a deal. Um, we'll still probably see him pick just because the meta is fairly slow to change. Wow, Zeus pace it increased by one. All right, so that's it for the patch analysis. I mean, it's another buff to Zeus. I'm, cool, I'm surprised cool. that nobody's picking this hero at all. Some people are. It's like a four. Yeah. But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. That's another patch. 722F. And uh, anything you want to say? Any, any last words? Spam Tinker. Please don't do that. I'm going to ban it first every single pub. See you later.